Hey, how you doing? This is Adam Post, publisher of more than a thousand comic books and marketing expert covering Farmers Go Nuclear as Woke John Deere now obsessed with DEI. Let's get into the story. Before we do, please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications. Give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate you guys. The same journalist that took down Tractor Supply's DEI program is now targeting John Deere. Robbie Starbuck was really effective with Tractor Supply, and what's going on with John Deere is at least as ridiculous. From his tweet, it's time to expose John Deere. John Deere has been one of the most beloved brands by conservative farmers, but recently on CEO John May's watch, they've gone woke. Here's some of what Robbie and his team found. John Deere funded a pride event for kids as young as three. What kind of pride event was that? That was the Little Rainbow Run for Capital City Pride. And you would say, how could you do this with, with event participants that are children that are aged as little as three to five? Isn't that a little bit young to be pushing this on them? It goes from ages three to 10 plus. What does that have to do with tractors? I can't see the connection to tractors and sponsoring events with as young as three-year-olds for pride events. They also finance gender bread man training. Yes, gender bread man training. I had to look up each one of these terms and I do a lot of these videos. I'm pretty familiar with their terms. Gender bread was pretty new. I'd heard of it, but I can't say I knew what it was. Here's what Google says gender bread man training is. The gender bread person is a concept that explores how gender influences and is influenced by identity, attraction, and sex. Attraction and sex and tractors. They don't really have a connection. The term gender bread man may refer to a person who associates the word gingerbread with man and assigns a gender to an illustration that was designed not to have one. So like a gingerbread man, if you call it a gingerbread man, you can certainly look at it and say, well, you can't technically tell if that's a man or a woman or whatever other gender they're calling these things now. But I always took gingerbread man to refer to mankind, which includes men and women. And if you can find the connection to a gingerbread man and tractors, you're definitely way ahead of all of us. The genderbread person exercise can help clarify the differences between gender, sex, and sexual orientation. Some components of gender and sexual identity include sex, biological traits such as chromosomes, genitalia, and hormones, gender identity, psychological knowledge of one's gender, gender expression, how one tells others their gender, and orientation, one who is sexually and or romantically attracted to gingerbread. Let's see what it says. Oh, they don't tell us. But let's be honest, in the gender bread game, you're probably okay with being attracted to anyone. No close association with tractors, but maybe we'll figure that one out later. John Deere asks employees to list your preferred pronouns on all communications. Bill Gates is listed as their largest shareholder. John Deere celebrated their accounting and finance team taking United Way's 21-day United for Equity program. A 21-day program for their accounting team. Three weeks worth of training for people in equity in the accounting department? It doesn't really sound appropriate. In accounting, you want to make sure your financial reporting is accurate. Equity, like tractors and gingerbread men, actually don't have any connection. When Robbie did the United for Equity program, it promoted Ibram Kendi, the woke children's book anti-racist baby, Awake to Woke at Work, a podcast on the concept of whiteness, Woke activist Robin DeAngelo's bigotry against Christians who supposedly have Christian privilege and even more of this stuff. And if you've never heard of Christian privilege before, they love that too. This is what Christian privilege is. It's a social advantage supposedly bestowed on Christians in any historically Christian society. This arises out of the presumption that Christian belief is a social norm. That leads to the marginalization of non-religious and members of other religions through institutional religious discrimination or religious persecution. By the way, if you, like me, have been paying attention, you would have noticed that there is no other religion that gets associated with any kind of privilege, just attacking Christians. Christian privilege can also supposedly lead to the neglect of outsiders' cultural heritage and religious practices. And if that's not enough nonsense for you, 
Christian privilege is a type of dominant group privilege where the unconscious or conscious attitudes and beliefs of Christians are advantageous to Christians over non-Christians. Examples include opinions that non-Christian beliefs are inferior or dangerous, or that those who adhere to non-Christian beliefs are amoral, immoral, or sinful. Such prejudices pervade established social institutions, are reinforced by the broader society, and have evolved as part of its history. The only religion that's supposed to be allowed in this country at this point is the new religion of the socially progressive, the LGBT, DEI, gender-bred group of people pushing that on other people. Of course, anyone can be any way they want to be, but they don't need to be pushing their policy and their ideas and their new religion on everyone else in society. And that's what they're doing. And somehow John Deere is involved in their religious quest. John Deere's woke policies have spread across the global John Deere brand, with many of their DEI policies also being forced on their Latin American and India branches. LGBT and race-based identity groups are also featured at the corporate offices. Those are what they call like resource groups. So they get special funding and they have special events for people who are LGBT or Native American or African American, various special individual groups that exclude other people and are usually funded by their corporate employers. John Deere has a total commitment to DEI policies. They also have a 95 out of 100 CEI score from the HRC. The HRC is the human rights campaign, pushing this DEI agenda everywhere they can and in multiple public corporations. John Deere also announced layoffs in the US and they plan to shift large segments of their production away from the United States to Mexico. Most recently, 600 employees. From Newser.com, on top of the June layoffs, John Deere adds 600 more layoffs. Three Midwest factories will see some pink slips as the company looks to a new factory in Mexico. Why put all this work in Mexico? A story as old as time itself. They want to make more money. They don't want to pay American benefits and labor. But they have unlimited resources to push these DEI programs, at least until this gets fixed. It got fixed at Tractor Supply. It can get fixed here. And it was fixed at Tractor Supply by the same journalist. From Bloomberg, Tractor Supply ditches DEI and climate goals after online attacks. It's called online accountability. It's called exposing to your customers and your shareholders the ridiculous projects you waste money on that don't help customers or shareholders. Some 600 John Deere factory workers in the Midwest will be getting pink slips come end of next month, according to CNN, as John Deere continues to shed employees in what it calls a proactive response to weakening demand for its agricultural equipment. Two factories in Iowa will lose about 310 workers, while a factory in Illinois, where Deere is based, will lose about 280 employees come August 30th. That's a significant cull from a total of 4,175 employees at three factories, which produces harvesting, construction, and forestry equipment, and it follows 620 layoffs at two of its factories at the end of June. And it shows you where a company's loyalties are when they're laying off 620 people in June, another 600 right now out of 4,100 employees? That's a huge percentage. It means they're focusing on moving a huge amount of their production to Mexico. Before long, you won't be able to consider them an American company. To put it mildly, John Deere seems to have forgotten who their customers are. Having a farm, the journalist himself is disgusted that a once great American brand is now taking this turn to seemingly embrace leftist policies that are diametrically opposed to the values of most farmers. What's unknown so far is whether CEO John May is knowingly forcing these policies or if it's gotten out of control and he's out of the loop on how bad it is. His response to the story will be very revealing as to his culpability in the implementation of woke policies. This report is only the beginning on John Deere. They have many pieces of news to report and it's gonna take weeks, even months to report it thoroughly. We'll see reporting piece by piece so customers and potential customers are informed on the brand's policies. If they're proud of adopting woke policies, then John Deere and their CEO should be overjoyed at all of the reporting coverage on their policies, positions, donations, and culture. Next, we'll see a deep dive on donations, interviews their executives have given, hiring practices, woke causes they've supported, the difficulty some farmers have faced trying to repair their products, and much more. As we saw with their tractor supply stories, 
Millions of people spoke out against these type of woke policies and ultimately Tractor Supply did the right thing by eliminating woke policies, donations, trainings, and positions because of customer voices. The customer is king. And most of us just want companies we shop at to stop virtue signaling about divisive, social, cultural, or political issues. If you agree with this, you can get the word out by sharing my video, but most importantly, follow Robbie Starbuck and share his video. He's easy to find on X, and he's been doing updates on this story. For example, he recently pointed out that PR teams are now looking at his accounts and looking at him on LinkedIn, who work for John Deere. He says here, my goodness, these people are amateurs. These two both looked at my LinkedIn page in public mode, so my team looked up their companies and both companies do PR for John Deere. Does John Deere really have two PR companies working on this expose? Is it really that hard to admit you lost touch with customers, apologize, and then eliminate every woke policy and position? You don't need two PR companies to do that. He's absolutely right. He already established with Tractor Supply. All you need to do is apologize, cancel the nonsense, and let the public know you made a mistake. He's had nothing bad to say about Tractor Supply, and none of us have. Since Tractor Supply has come out, canceled their DEI programs, apologized, and admitted they let their customers down, and they won't do it again. Interesting comment from Tegan Kozina. I really don't rate these agencies if they don't properly understand their clients' audiences. Did they really think wokeness would resonate with the average John Deere customer? And of course, the average John Deere customer doesn't want gender-bred trainings for employees and sponsorship of inappropriate events for children. These companies just get out of control and then it takes a journalist like Robbie Starbuck and everyone else to follow up, let people know about it so it creates enough of a buzz that the company really has to make a decision. Do we really want to keep doing this thing or will we back off of this thing? And in another recent update, Multiple sources tell Robbie Starbuck that John Deere did an event for Pride Month focused on John Deere employees whose kids identify as trans. He's told John Deere provided special resources to them. And then comes the question, do John Deere customers know that the company supports transitioning children? Let me know what you think of all this in the comments below. Always love to see your ideas. Please be sure you are subscribed to the channel. Click the bell for notifications, give me a thumbs up, and I'll see you again soon with another story. And if I don't see you, I will miss you.